Luc Böhme from Belgium. Welcome to Tallinn. Uh, I understand that uh, you are uh, today bringing us some fresh knowledge about uh, recycling concrete. Could you please tell us the story about uh, what do you like about concrete or how you become so interested about uh, concrete and uh, recycling? Yes, well, uh, first of all, um, I'm from the University uh, Leuven in Belgium and we are spread all over in Flanders with our Faculty of Engineering Technology and I'm, I'm a part of the uh, Department of Civil Engineering. My research is in fact on recycling. But my interest uh, already comes from my uh, period as a master student. I graduated in 1980s and um, for my master student, my master thesis, sorry, I wanted to do something about recycling. But nobody was interested. I could not find a promoter for this. Recycling in general in, or? No, recycling in concrete, uh, most okay. of all. And uh, because everyone, everyone at that time said, oh, nobody is interested in recycling. We're going to produce concrete the way it is. So I did something completely different. I made a study about steel constructions, whatever. But later on, I came back in 91 in the university to start teaching over then. And immediately I started to set up my own research in recycling all kinds of things, gypsum, um, waste from tiling industry, and most of all, use of uh, concrete recycled aggregates. So it has always triggered me to know what you can do with material, because I don't believe you can keep on taking out material from nature without doing something which you throw away. You have to do something with waste. And for me, waste is a material. So if it's concrete waste, it becomes a material to make uh, new concrete with. Is the, is the concept of uh, recycling, is it, is it like really fresh? Or, uh, or in some countries, for example, Belgium, are you already recycling it? Or it's just like everybody's building their way for, towards it? No, um, no, I think there are many countries now already, um, certainly north of Europe, Norway, um, I think Denmark, uh, Germany, the Netherlands, we in Flanders, in Belgium, uh, that are dealing with uh, recycling already many years. In fact, in Flanders, we started doing this, let's say, beginning of the 1990s. Because we had a waste problem, we saw that uh, we did not have enough space enough um, in landfilling. So we had to do something about landfilling capacity and the use of uh, inert waste. And so the government made a new policy about uh, waste and they said everything which can be recycled should be recycled. So that's a good point. It gives you an end of waste policy. And that's important. So we started, let's say, using uh, recycled concrete aggregates or recycled uh, construction demolition waste, because also the mixed waste can be used, um, since the 1990s. What was the like, main problems when the policymakers started to open up the, the gates to, towards saying it's not, a, it's not trash anymore? It's not just waste, we can use it again. What was the like, uh, problems that uh, arrived? Yeah, well, the belief in the material. Um, you need a lot of uh, experiments being done. You need a lot of proof to show people that even the recycled uh, material can be useful as uh, an aggregate or a material to so make something can new. It? it can. It can. It can, I'm quite sure. It can. That's what we have been proving uh, all along okay. in these years in, in many projects we have run uh, at the university in my research group. Um, so it can be proven uh, that you can recycle material. For metals, it's easy. Metals can always be recycled. Uh, that's quite obvious. Glass can be recycled. Everybody at this moment uh, collects glass, waste glass, and recycles this. For concrete, uh, that's something difficult. Uh, difficult eh? um, so you need a lot of proof, especially to convince people from the concrete industry, because they're so used to make standard concrete that they lack the knowledge and the experience to deal with other kinds of aggregates or aggregates with other kind of behavior. 
that's the most important thing. Maybe they don't see the business sense behind it, or... Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, in Belgium, most of the concrete industry and the cement industry, especially the cement, the cement industry, they also own the quarries where they produce the, the aggregates. So, in the 1990s, there was quite a lot of competition with cement industry. They did not really want the recycled aggregates to become on the market. But now they have changed the ideas because the cement industry also needs to get uh, a green image. And so now they are supporting even the use of recycled concrete aggregates because they want to green the concrete industry. Okay, so basically it has to start from the policy makers. Yeah. It, doesn't, it won't start from the query no. owners or, no. uh, or the construction no. companies. And even from the public, it doesn't start from the public. If you ask uh, people um, uh, in the streets if they want to use green products, they all say yes. But at the moment, as if you ask uh, if they want to pay for this, then they say no. So that's also a problem. The green idea, well, it should not cost really more. Uh, we can prove that uh, recycling concrete is not, in fact, more expensive. But people have this tendency to think that recycling uh, is sometimes more expensive and so they hesitate to uh, buy it or to go into detail. So, uh, can you possibly claim that even without government subsidizing it can be cost efficient to recycle concrete? Well, at this moment the government is not subsidizing. The only thing the government said is uh, we don't want uh, waste anymore. So if you want to landfill waste, you will have to pay high taxes because you should bring your waste to a recycling center. And uh, if you bring your waste, your construction waste, to a recycling center, the cost at the gate, uh, the fee you have to pay to give it uh, to the recycling center, is about 5 to 8 euros for mixed aggregates and maybe 0 euros when it's uh, pure concrete uh, waste that you bring, compared to 150 euros per ton uh, if you want to landfill, well, that's a good stimulus. Yeah? That's the, the initiative you have to take. You, you need some incentives mm -hmm. given by the government to bring the industry towards recycling. And that's without subsidizing. It's okay. just uh, a mentality saying, no, we don't want this. If you want, still want to con continue the way you're doing now, landfilling, then you have to pay taxes. Nobody wants to pay taxes, so they have to bring it well, to the recycling center. And subsidizing, they can basically, it's the same measure, right? Yes, but taxes, somebody has to yeah. pay for the taxes. I mean, uh, for the subsidies. Eh? If government wants to give subsidies, mm -hmm. then they have to collect the money some, from someone. So you will all pay taxes. Everybody will well, pay taxes for that this. That is true, yeah. So that's not what we wanted. We think that um, the person that generates the waste should pay for the waste, unless he can do something with it. So that's what we stimulate. We say waste is in fact material. So instead of landfilling, we want to avoid landfilling. To avoid landfilling, we raise taxes. So uh, we say, yeah, you should bring this to a recycling company and have it recycled. And this can be done. It can be done uh, for metals, it can be done for concrete waste or demolition waste. It can be done for all kinds of, of uh, other kind of waste, for batteries, uh, whatever. So that's what we do uh, at this moment in Flanders. We have all kinds of uh, waste uh, companies uh, do you see a lot all of uh, interest from abroad, companies from, uh, from different uh, countries in Europe or outside of Europe getting yeah. interested in your technology and uh, your research? Yeah, there's quite, uh, there's quite some interest from abroad and especially from China at this moment. Really? Yeah. Uh, myself, I've been uh, working in the three universities in China, in the province of Zhejiang, uh, during the last six years. And soon, uh, at the, the end of the month, May, I will go back to China. But this time I'm invited by the Chinese railway company because they want to build uh, a new high-speed uh, railroad track, but they have to demolish a lot of uh, existing infrastructure. 
even bridges which are uh, built in 2008, they have to demolish. So they will have a lot of rubble, but they don't know what to do with this. And if they have to transport this to a recycling center in China, uh, which is difficult to find <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. Uh, they will have to pay a lot of money just for transportation. So they think, oh, maybe we can use the same kind of money we estimate uh, to build a company to make something. Mm -hmm. and, but we don't know what to do. So they invited me over to, to discuss this and look at some uh, possibilities to make concrete products. In fact, small products, paving blocks or whatever, building blocks to be used in the new railway stations. Is there some different type of interesting challenges there in China or or it's just uh, concrete is the same everywhere? No, 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 it's uh, all kind of waste streams. Uh, they have a huge amount of waste. They have really huge problem with uh, dealing with waste and waste management. And uh, that's what I learned uh, in November last when I was there. Uh, I set up a recycling research institute in the uh, province of Zhejiang. And um, well, many issues had to do with all kind of industrial waste sludges um, uh, which are contaminated or not contaminated, uh, metal waste, fly ash, all these kind of problems they have. Well, it's great to know that they are interested in solving those problems. Yeah, but in China the way of working is somewhat different. If the government, the national government decides on something, then it comes to the provinces, then it comes to the cities, okay. large cities. So it takes and time. Then, yeah, it's really, uh, it's, uh, like a uh, railroad always goes top down. Which it takes some time, but when they decide it, in two years' time, I'm quite sure things will change. Okay, so green flag is given for yeah. renewables and recycling. Let's hope so. Well, that's great. Nice to have you, Luke, and uh, welcome to Tallinn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.